What's poppin' Janice Joplin? It is I once again, Mr. Cinema Junkie. I am doing something right now that I have not done in quite a while that I can remember. A response video. Um, no, nobody asked for it. Nobody said I had to. In the video, no one even says, hey, respond if you want. Nobody said anything like that. But I was moved to respond. Um, it's a subject that I'm really interested in. Um, Slim Pickens was talking about underrated revenge movies. And it got me to thinking of some of my favorites. Now, when you think of revenge movies, there's a, there's a circle of us who are into a lot of the same movies. So when you throw out words like revenge movies, revenge flicks, the first ones that come to mind are usually things like old boy, sympathy for Mr. Vengeance, things like that. I personally believe that revenge movies are done best by the Koreans. Koreans make damn good revenge movies. They're very articulate. They're very planned out. Um, if you've seen Old Boy, you know what I'm talking about. A lot of the movies are, are kind of like a planning stage. Very, very precise in their planning. For ultimate revenge but then you have revenge movies that are just you know stab and slash you got death sentence uh, with with uh, Kevin Bacon excellent movie um, death wish you know um, you got those types of movies it's just like you know someone wronged me I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna handle my my shit and but Korean revenge movies are, are a little more than that well, a lot more than that actually when you think about it it's not a simple thing of like, oh, there's a guy who wronged me, stab or shoot, and he's gone. No, I'm going to mess with him. I'm going to mess with him so bad, his whole life is going to be for shit. He should pray for death by the time I'm done. That's the kind of thing Korean movies bring. But we're talking about underrated revenge movies. These might be movies that are good, but kind of unheard of. Um, a very small audience, uh, and some that might that generally people don't really care for, but like you know, it has a cult following, and, and you're just like you can't get enough of it. So, Slim had three titles, and he had two honorable mentions. But before I go into those, I want to reply to one of his picks uh, as an honorable mention and that is Law Abiding Citizen Law Abiding Citizen is the tits that movie was so damn good, if you haven't seen it you are so missing out um, he summed it up really well saying that it had a lot of like unexpected parts, parts that will catch you off guard and uh to, to speak of any of them would be to ruin the experience. But uh, there's one particular part, and uh, if you've seen it, you know what I mean. Um, if you want no clue whatsoever, cover your ears, cut the volume, until I put my hand down. Um, but I'm just going to say two words, and anyone who's seen it knows exactly what I'm talking about. And those two words are cell phone. You know what I'm talking about, man. When I first saw that scene, I was like, damn, what happened? So good. I mean, there was only probably one part of that movie that I found kind of disappointing. But not enough to where I could say, ah, oh, the movie sucked. No, the movie was excellent. Way excellent. So, yeah, if you haven't seen that movie, I, I vouch for it. I definitely vouch for it. Um, now, underrated revenge movies. My picks are going to lean more towards stuff that I watched when I was a teenager. Um, early to mid-80s kind of stuff. But I do have one Korean title. I'll save that for last. But first on my picks would be The Exterminator. Not Terminator, 
EX Terminator. EX Terminator. Starred uh, Robert Ginty. Um, he's done a few movies here and there, but most notably The Exterminator and The Exterminator 2. Um, Exterminator 2, ah, not so hot on that one. It, it was okay, but it was just like one of those so bad it's good kind of movies, I guess. Or so bad it's good, but still pretty bad. <laughs> Didn't care for that one too much, but the first one, oh man. That was like revenge slash exploitation back in the in the early 80s mid 80s uh, political correctness wasn't a big thing back then there were a lot of things that they did that they got away with um, in those movies and it made it more raw more real um, and speaking of real there's a scene in there where they're showing like back when he's in Vietnam they're being held prisoner and being questioned by the, by the Viet Cong and a guy gets his throat cut and it, it's so real and this is back before CGI this is these were like proper effects and uh, it was so like it wasn't gory like it wasn't like gallons of blood flying all over the place but it it was it was enough to make you cringe like oh god that oh that's not right you know um, but then as the movie goes on, it gets darker. It gets like, there's a chicken hawk that, that he goes after. And chicken hawks are guys that buy, like, young boys to get to pimp out to perverts. So he finds out about this guy, and he goes after him. And it's, so it's such a sleazy, dirty movie. You almost feel like you need to take a shower after you watch it. Um, some of you may see it. If you've never seen it before, you may see it and go, oh, it's actually kind of tame, really. But um, it's for its time, and I think it stands the test of time. It's a pretty dirty movie. Um, I enjoy it immensely. I, I recently got it on Blu-ray. I'm so happy. So uh, first pick, The Exterminator. Second one, hold the jeers, people, please. But uh, I have to say, Death Wish Two. Now, Death Wish Two. People, there's a lot of people, there's a camp of people who hate that movie with a passion. They say that movie sucks. They say it's it ruined, you know, a great movie, Death Wish. Um, I have to disagree. Yeah, there were some parts in it that were just kind of like a little on the ridiculous side. But I didn't think it jumped the shark just yet. This is the shark. We'll say that Death Wish 2 was the ramp that led to the shark. Okay, Here's Death Wish 2. Um, what parts am I talking about? Well, they pick up from part 1 where he has the catatonic daughter. Remember in part 1 she, she was so freaked out by the trauma that she went through with her and her mother being raped that she couldn't speak. She was just kind of like, uh, just, but she didn't make any noise. She was just like, uh, she didn't talk or nothing. She lost the gift of speech. Well, in part 2, they go to pick her up from her wherever she's staying, an asylum or whatever. And she's all smiles and communicating with head nods and pointing, but she's still not speaking. At that point, it's like, ah, you're faking it for attention. <laughs> Come on, man. Um, and then, and of course, you know, she gets raped again. You know, this, this chick is a was born under a bad sign or something. But it can't be denied that it, they amped up the footage and, and the storyline a little bit, uh, so much so that they had actually had to cut a scene from the theatrical version, uh, the rape scene with the maid, they had to cut that uh, so they could release it because a lot of places weren't going to carry it with that scene in there, it was it was pretty raw, pretty dirty, you know um, and then his tactics for revenge are, are pretty raw and stuff, it wasn't until Death Wish 3 that it got a little comic bookish and ridiculous uh, I mean, come on. You're not just going to have a couple of 50 caliber Browning machine guns laying around. You're not going to have a, a, was it a 475 Wilby Magnum mailed to you in New York? I mean, I'm sorry, man. It's, it's just, it's too ridiculous. 
Allah's rocket launcher? Stop it. What happened? Oh, sorry for the interruption. A little message came up. It said something about recording. So, um, but Death Wish 2, I think it's great. I think it's great. Aside from his silly daughter still vying for her daddy's attention, and maybe some of the, the, the outfits that, you know, they wore. There was a movie called Street Gang where the, the gang wore, like, matching outfits. Um, that, that has no play, man. There's no play to that anymore. Nobody wears matching outfits in a gang. It's not like the Warriors and shit, you know? But, uh, yeah, they have matching jackets. That was a good one, too. Street, street Gang slash Vigilante. It was it was going by both titles. That was a really good one as well, but um, I should have saved that for an honorable mention. Duh! But I already let it out there. Um, but my Korean pick is one called Bedeviled. Now this this movie kind of has you rooting for for this girl big time. Um, they live on this island, and it's like the whole island is giving her shit for some reason. I forgot why, but the whole island is just they dump on her. They, they have her working like a slave. They treat her like a dog. Um, but she doesn't get, like, revenge until, say, towards the end of the movie. And again, kind of like Law Abiding Citizen, there was a scene that just kind of disappointed me, but not enough to where I could really hate on the movie too much. Um, but it was good. Bloody. It was, it was pretty bloody, pretty violent. But I liked it a lot. There was one I was looking for, but I can't remember the name of it. Uh, it should have been pretty easy to find. I, I believe it's a Korean film. And I think it either goes by the name Revenge or Vengeance. But when I looked up Vengeance, it was a totally different movie. The one I'm looking for is a guy that goes after, like, his daughter is kidnapped. And uh, you find out that she's... Well, do I give it away? Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert, okay, fast forward a little bit. I'll wave when I'm done talking about this movie. But he he finds out that uh, his daughter's kidnapped by somebody that... The cop finds out his daughter was kidnapped by somebody he had wronged somehow while investigating that person's daughter's death. Uh, but again, the way they, they, they think it out and plan it out and everything and and the, re the type of revenge they get. You know, it's not just a simple stab and slash or shoot. They fuck with this guy's mind so bad and uh, it, it, it all culminates into a really great ending I stopped see my other charging oh okay got it so it's, it's talking about my charging I got the charger hooked up to it so I don't run out of power um but yeah my, my main picks for this would be uh, The Exterminator Death Wish 2 and Bedeviled um Honorable mentions. Hmm. Well, I already mentioned Death Sentence. And I don't think that's an underrated movie at all. I, I think there's enough people that are on board with that one. But if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend that one. That one was great. Uh, John Goodman just fucking steals the show as far as I'm concerned. Um, Law Abiding Citizen. Slim Pickens mentioned that one. And, and I have to agree. It's a great movie. But uh, didn't really think of honorable mentions too much. He did mention also Death Squirt Service. And he pretty much nailed that one. Uh, it isn't going to win any Oscars, but, you know, it's, it's got... Sleazebox movies have a cult following. Um, you either like them or you don't. Same thing with trauma films. You either like them or you don't. You either, you're either, you know, you want, like, grade A storytelling and acting all the time or or you want a little you know a little midnight snack a little junk food with your with your healthy diet so for me death squirt was great um ironically slim had just reviewed a movie called bat pussy and when he mentioned that title bat pussy for some reason i automatically thought of death squirt service if you don't know what i'm talking about go see the movie and you'll, it'll make all the sense in the world. <sighs> Don't really have a, a strong 
honorable mention, other than uh, probably... What was that movie? Clint Eastwood, Dirty Harry. Um, was it Sudden Impact? Or Tightrope? It was Sudden Impact. The one where the, where the girl, the woman, is getting revenge because her and her, her sister were raped under a pier. Rape Revenge pretty much nails it all the time. I mean, you got movies like uh, Irreversible, which was a strange movie to watch. It's told The whole story is told in reverse, but it's got one of the most brutal rape scenes ever. Um, and the revenge on that one was, was good, but it starts with the revenge. I don't know what Gaspar Noah was thinking when he when he did this movie. Uh, it made it very unique, but it's very odd. Um, hmm. I really should have thought this through a little bit more. I was just moved to do this video right away. But, honorable mentions, other than the one I just mentioned with Clint Eastwood, and I don't even think I got the title right. Shoot. Have I lost my touch? Did I have a touch to begin with? Um, hmm. Oh! Psh. I did have honorable mentions. Big time honorable mentions. How did I forget? You have to forgive me, guys. I'm robo tripping. Got this damn cough I'm trying to keep under control here. Yes, of course. Um, Daddy's Little Girl. You know the, the basic storyline of a. A guy whose daughter gets murdered and he finds the guy who did it and, and he gives him shit. Big time shit. I mean, this this was some painful stuff to sit through. And right along those same lines, uh, the tortured, I believe it's called, um, the mother and father find uh, a guy who's being transported who is responsible for the death of their son, I believe. And they put him through some hell. They keep him alive and keep torturing him and shit. But this one has more of a twist to it. Daddy's little girl. That one's pretty straightforward. Daddy's little girl, I remember I was watching it with my friend. And uh, it made her cry because uh, the guy has keeps seeing his daughter everywhere. And there's this thing they used to say to each other. Where he'd say, I love you to the moon and back. After that... I would just mention, I would just look at her, i go, to the moon and back. And she'd go, <laughs> stop. That's so sweet. But the movie was brutal. Both of those movies, those are my honorable mentions. The Tortured and Daddy's Little Girl. I believe Daddy's Little Girl is a, either a New Zealand flick or an Australian flick. I don't remember right offhand. But definitely check it out. And uh, The Tortured, that's on Netflix, I believe. So, there you have it. I got it all wrapped up there in under in under 20 minutes at least. Sorry. <sighs> I've been sick. I had sound effects. <laughs> Messed that all up. I was going to start the video with this one. These sound like sound effects I would use like in a podcast. It was a gift. Good morning, campers. It's your favorite DJ. Yeah, sounds like a radio program. But there you have it, guys. Uh, underrated Revenge Flicks. Uh, I want to thank um, Slim Pickens. And uh, I guess I should also thank uh, the guy who was answering, King, the King of Movies? I didn't catch the whole name, I'm sorry. But, uh, yeah, great subject, guys. Great subject. Um, I need to do more of these. Remember when YouTube used to let you make like response videos? You could put a, a video in the comments. They don't let you do that anymore. That sucks. It was always fun to do that. We'd have, back in the day, we'd have contests 
and have people put videos for the contest. Can't do that anymore. Boo. Fucking YouTube, man. Alright, guys. It's been fun. Take care. And I'll be talking to you all soon. Later.